Welcome to the Blue Security Podcast, a weekly podcast for information security defenders, where we bring you discussions on best practices, tools, and implementation for enterprise security. Now, here are your hosts for today's show, Andy Ja and Adam Brewer. Welcome to another episode of the Blue Security Podcast. I'm Andy, your host. I'm Adam, your co-host. This week, we're going to talk about secure authentication to Azure Virtual Machines. Now, the majority of the show is going to be focused on Linux VMs because I think traditionally those have been harder to figure out how to manage secure authentication, but we will touch on Windows as well. So the issues that a lot of organizations face is that, you know, you're starting to use infrastructure in clouds uh, with VMs that are usually Linux, right? Linux is probably the majority of VMs in most organizations today for running servers, uh, web apps, and other loads that are out there. And so when you try to connect to Linux machines, the secure method is certificate authentication. There are other ways to authenticate to Linux machines, like using a username and password, like the root username and password is usually the, the most common and easiest way to log in, but it is very insecure. Some orgs can use like a password manager to secure usernames and passwords, but that is probably not the best way to do it. Now, Linux has methods to implement multi-factor authentication, so it is possible to use like the Google Auth to use a multi-factor for a Linux machine. However, that is very, very, com- not necessarily complex, but you have to be careful because if you somehow mess up the MFA or lose it, you will lock yourself out of that machine forever. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. The more common way that most IT orgs secure auth to Linux machines is using SSH keys. But that does require you to store the private key somewhere. Sometimes you can store it locally, which is not recommended. You could store it in like a cloud sharing site like OneDrive, SharePoint, Box. I've seen people do that. You could put it in a password vault. Um, But there are other like vaults that can systematically pull keys and secrets. Something like HashiCorp I've seen orgs use or Azure Key Vault. Those are probably the best ways to do them because then you can role-based access those keys to certain people and, you know, integrate with other identity solutions to say you have access to these keys and you have access to these secrets. So that's the the main issue with Linux. And then with Windows, traditionally the protocol is remote desktop protocol, so RDP. And those sometimes orgs control those through just the administrative role, like the local administrator has access to RDP or the remote desktop users group within Windows. You can control that through GPO or just locally add those people to those groups. And so that's one way to do it for for Windows. Another way to to kind of get more secure is to use like a smart card policy and certificate trust with Windows Hello for Business. And so that's a way that we've discussed where you do have to have a little bit more infrastructure in place, like you have to have certificate issued to users, but that does give you that that method. So with Windows, especially within Azure, and we'll talk more about Azure because Adam and I are more familiar with Azure, but there's methods that you can deploy virtual machines that allow you to use Azure Active Directory identity to authenticate to them. And so that's important because if you do that, you can apply conditional access policies to those authentications. So require like a compliant device or require MFA before you can RDP to this Windows computer. 
And there's also a method called Bastion, which we will talk about later in the show. And that is another method to authenticate securely to Windows machines. But for the most part, we're going to dive into Linux machines as far as secure auth. And I'll talk about the first method. And then, Adam, I'll I'll ask you if you have some thoughts. But this was recently released that you could authenticate to a Linux machine in Azure AD using Azure Active Directory identity, which is huge. Like that is something that has not been a capability in the past. And so the, the benefits of that is that you don't have to issue out a key, right? Normally you have a private key that you have to issue out to your users in order to use SSH um, authentication, certificate-based authentication. But in this case, you don't have to issue out those keys. It is escrowed by Azure Active Directory and you don't have to have a local administrator account. You can RBAC those uh, policies. You can apply conditional access. I mean, it's, it's a major, major improvement in authentication to Linux machines by just using your Azure Active Directory identity. Any thoughts on that, Adam? I want to know more. Uh, one, so one of the things you said I can confirm, uh, at least for Azure, and so I assume this is even more so in other clouds, we talk frequently how in Azure, over half of the virtual machines there are Linux. So you said you suspect that the majority of VMs in public cloud are Linux VMs. At least for Azure, I can confirm that is true and has been for many years where Linux machines outnumber Windows machines. So that's why it's so important to have a effective solution. You know, Linux really, um, you know, in a lot of deployment scenarios just doesn't have a great like network, you know, identity kind of model to sign in with. It's all very local. Um, and so this is, this is really neat. And I'm, I'm kind of curious to learn more along with our listeners. Yeah. So it's, it's not very difficult to implement now for VMs that you already have like local users with, and you don't have certificate based auth, you're not going to be able to convert them unless you install a certificate base and So the easiest way is to just start with newer VMs. And when you create a Linux VM within Azure, you have to check off the box to number one, user certificate to authenticate to it. And then two, allow Azure AD authentication. So that's a new check mark or option when you create a Linux machine within Azure. uh, Azure. And Once that machine has been created, you can grant rights to that machine by granting a role within the either the subscription or the resource group and allow virtual machine login. So there's three different roles within Azure to allow access to these virtual machines. One is administrator login, one is contributor, and then the last one is user login. And so the users that you want assigned and have access to these machines have to have that role. And then simply it's, you have to have a, a tool to SSH to them that allows open SSH uh, certificate authentication. The easiest way to do it is through Azure CLI or the Azure cloud um, command uh, prompt. And so those are going to be the easiest way to do it. You do have to install those tools on the machine or VM that you're trying to access, right? And so there's there's additional things. I think when we start talking about pros and cons with the next method with Bastion, like in this case, you're assuming that you are going to SSH to that machine from a managed machine, right? Is is what I would expect it to be, and you can condi- you can apply conditional access to do that. In the next one. You know, you can um, you can do that without having to install any additional tools because it's all done in the browser. Now, with this method, you can have the Azure VM be assigned a public 
IP or a private IP. If you assign it a private IP, obviously you have to have network connectivity from wherever you're SSHing to, right? So a VPN or whatever, be on the local network in order to access it. So that's a key thing. If it's a public IP, you're actually going to be SSHing over a public IP. There's no, you know, you have to open up port 22 to the internet in order to SSH to it, even though you're authenticating it to uh, with your Azure Active Directory account and you're using certificate-based authentication, you still have to open up that port to the internet. So that's a risk for sure. And so that's I would consider that to be less secure. I would implement this solution in more of a private cloud where you have to have network connectivity of some sort. And there are a few um, distributions that are supported. So not every single distribution under the sun, but most of the main ones like CentOS, Debian, uh, Red Hat, Ubuntu. Um, and then it is supported in um, the commercial cloud, the government cloud, and the Chinese cloud. And then one other thing which I thought was really interesting is that it is enabled for Azure Arc servers. And we talked about Azure Arc before in our patching uh, episode, but that means if you have a server that is on-prem or sitting in a third-party cloud, you could possibly use this to authenticate to those machines as well. So the other method is called Azure Bastion. And I think we've mentioned Azure Bastion on this show before, but it is a service that I like to think of as like a jump box as a service, right? And so typically a jump box sits in like a DMZ or something like that. And you would use that. It's a hardened endpoint that you have to maintain and then it's exposed to the internet. And then you use that to then jump into your internal network to gain access to internal resources. I don't know if Azure Bastion would apply to everything in your environment. Maybe, you know, things that you need exposed without connectivity, because that is one of the main benefits is that you don't need a public IP at all. And then you're able to access that resource from anywhere using your Azure Active Directory credentials. So you're just signing in over the cloud. Now, of course, you can conditional uh, apply conditional access policies to that. But, you know, if you allowed it, you could then use Azure Bastion through the browser and get access, you know, either SSH or RDP to resources that are in Azure. I like to think of this as more for companies that have regulations that they have to follow that they cannot have any public IPs exposed, but then they have a business requirement to access that from somewhere else, right? Without network connectivity, perhaps um, to the internal network. You can integrate that with Azure Key Vault for secure key management. So that is a super easy way to manage keys without having to issue out keys to every single user. You're just storing the key within Key Vault and then are backing those keys within Key Vault. And other private clouds have you know similar capabilities. Like AWS has something called a system session manager and AWS Transit that uses a similar type of concept where it's like a jump box as a service. And Google Cloud uses something called a cloud identity aware proxy. And so these are all like essentially the idea is a jump box as a service where you're not necessarily having to maintain a hardened endpoint in a DMZ that is exposed to the internet, but you're accessing your resources in a private cloud through a service that is provided for you without having to maintain any additional infrastructure, which is really nice. Any any thoughts on that, Adam? It's just kind of cool to walk through, and I think you did a good job of 
delineating kind of the two different options here and when you would want to use each one. I think in general, we talk on this show a lot around doing the little things. And this is one of those things I think could really help because identity is so fundamental to overall security. And if we can just bring some common sense to how we sign into Linux machines or how we RDP SSH to different machines with Azure Bastion or the AWS and GCP equivalents, those can be really helpful because those are very, very common attack vectors. So, you know, sometimes this stuff seems like, oh, this is, you know, really, really specific show tonight, guys. But these are the sorts of things that really make the difference. I think at the end of the day, more than bringing in a whole bunch of tools or anything else, it's it's getting the small stuff right. It's sweating the small stuff. So I think these are two really good call outs for modernizing the identity and access for your virtual machines. And that is helpful. Yeah, I just think about like Linux in general, like one you know, security teams don't necessarily interact sometimes with the cloud infrastructure engineers, right? There's traditional engineers that are doing the on-prem stuff. And because on-prem has been around for a long time, we're pretty good on like domain join servers and managing credentials and all of that, right? But for Linux, let's say you have a hundred Linux servers well, you're either maintaining a hundred different credentials, right? Or you're, you know, hopefully not having one root user and one shared password among all of those, but that's a pain to manage all of that. And even with a password manager, right? Like a credential manager that can be really complex and difficult. And you know, you're just adding different entries into there. Or you're using a root cert and issuing out different keys from there and then having to maintain your keys. And it's not easy for, you know, certain people to log on to Linux servers using a certificate. Like it's, you have to have a a pass key or pass phrase usually for those certificates. So that is then stored in a password vault on top of that. And so it gets very complex to try to maintain credentials for them and then if somebody leaves right if they have you know that passphrase saved somewhere and they have that certificate saved locally then you have to go through like revocation and all that and so this is just modernizing that and simplifying it where you don't have to worry about maintaining a password you don't have to worry about maintaining keys anywhere it is all just done as a service for you Mm -hmm. Um, i think the Azure Active Directory sign in. I think that is super easy, especially for most users, because then, you know, as soon as you disable, you know, either their on-prem identity that's synced to the cloud or their cloud identity, Mm -hmm. they lose access to everything. Yeah. Right. Right. So I, I just think it's, it's a common thing that security teams may not have a ton of insight on and, a lot of companies are moving so fast these days and just spinning up servers and they're not really thinking about authentication Mm -hmm. and how that works. Right. Um, So anyways, I thought this was a a good topic to talk about. I did actually write a blog article on it this week as well, which I'll link if you prefer reading through and seeing some screenshots on how to do it as well as the documentation in there. Um, so that'll walk you through if you guys are interested in spinning up your own to test it. And that's our show for this week. Thanks for watching and listening. Our contact information will be in the show notes. If you have any questions or topics you want us to talk about. Thanks. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to the Blue Security Podcast. Please check out the show notes, catch up on episodes you may have missed, and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Find Andy on Twitter at AJawZero and Adam at AJ Brewer. See you at our next episode.